get the 2023 Clownfish comic books, including Crimson Wren Volume 1 and previously on Clownfish TV. We're offering a limited number of these books. In our second chance offer, go to shopclownfish.com. That's shopclownfish.com. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and since it's a weekend, I think I'm going to talk about the comic book industry because uh, usually comic book videos don't do don't do really well on this channel anymore. But uh, I had some observations, and I want to talk about comic book numbers and sales numbers and why why and this is pure speculation on my part why I think some publishers might deliberately be hiding numbers from the public. And it's not what you think. It's actually not what you think. There's been a lot of speculation that the comic book industry is hiding numbers because the numbers are terrible and they don't want people to see how bad they're failing. It's, it's very hard to get a bead on how comic books are actually selling. I have another theory. I think that that might be part of it. 100%. I think that might be part of it, especially with Marvel and DC and uh, having to answer to Disney and Warner Brothers and all of that. Um, but I have another theory and it has to do with the green eyed monster. It has to do with jealousy. It has to do with entitlement and uh, kind of a, a prevailing attitude in the comic book industry, especially in the, uh, the indie space, that if somebody else is successful, you either have to knock them down or demand restitution from them, right? So let's let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. I'm going to point you in the direction of shopclownfish.com, where we're doing a second chance offer uh, for the two books we've crowdfunded. So far this year, we actually have two more on the way, uh, but I'm not going to launch those campaigns until we get the, uh, these two fulfilled. And we got pushed back because the printer and it's a whole it's a whole thing it's a whole thing but we're, we're reaching the end of the line with uh with these two books and this is actually what got me thinking because we've been on the fence about you know whether or not to put all of our eggs into the indiegogo and kickstarter basket or if we're going to you know do more through our own site like other publishers do like other companies do you know look at uh, you know hasbro mattel super seven toy companies especially are doing more uh, quote unquote labs or crowdfunding through their own site, taking pre-orders to see what the interest is in a product before committing dollars to that product. But the really uh, fascinating thing about that is that they're hiding their numbers. They're hiding their numbers. If you go to you know HasLab, uh, you can see, you can math it out. You can figure out, okay, this is a $500 toy uh, it's got, you know, 5,300 backers or whatever. Let's do the math. And that's approximately what Hasbro is bringing in, right? But they're not showing you how many dollars. Um, you know, if you go to Super 7, they don't even show you the number of backers. They're like, you're taking a pre-order for this uh, Thundercat uh, playset, but we're not going to show you how many actual backers there are. Because again, people can math it out and then come to their own conclusions. What what they can say in this case is, oh, hey, we didn't hit funding. Um, you know, we can't produce this, so we're going to give you your money back. Right? That's all you have to do. Now, I think on some level, and this is not the case across the board because I know a lot of these comic books are selling very, very poorly. But I think on some level that the numbers are being obscured because of the people working in the industry. This is just a theory I have, and I've been thinking about it for the last couple of weeks now, mostly because of what's going on with uh, Eric July and Comicsgate people and having all these crazies, uh, you know, stalk and dox and harass them over Twitter on, you know, social media. And, and a lot of it just comes down to, I believe, jealousy. And I think the jealousy stems from very prominently displayed, very uh, in-your-face numbers. Now, that might actually be Eric July's goal. His goal might be to provoke these people to anger, to, to market his book, right? He might actually know what the hell he's getting himself into a hundred percent and be like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to flaunt these numbers in front of these people to drive them crazy, to drive my book sales up 
because I'm going to drag them out in public and make an example of them. And then people are going to buy my book to stick it to these people. I could totally, I could totally see that working as a marketing tactic. I could. Um, not, not a marketing tactic I would want to use personally, because I know, I know what you're dealing with. We've been dealing with these people for years, but uh, I could see that being used as, as some kind of a marketing tactic because he's actually doing uh, crowdfunding and pre-orders through his own site. And he would have the option of hiding his numbers, but he's not doing it. He's, he's putting it right out there and it's driving people insane. Same with Ethan Van Skyver and the comics gate crew. Their numbers are public on Indiegogo and Kickstarter by default. I, w I wish Indiegogo and Kickstarter let you hide your numbers. They do not because originally, you got to remember, Kickstarter was never designed to be a pre-order platform. That's kind of what it morphed into. It was designed to be um, a platform to raise funds to complete a project or a business idea. You had a bunch of like micro investors. So of course, when you're dealing with a lot of people kicking money in, they need to see the financials. They need to see how much money is actually being raised. Plus Kickstarter can use it as a bragging uh, for bragging rights, right? They can, they can go out there and be like, look how many, you know, millions or billions of dollars we've raised because all these numbers are public. But what you're not realizing is that in those numbers, they're rolling like the shipping costs and everything into that. And so it's, you know, it's, it, it, it is, but it isn't what it appears to be. But again, you see six figures, you see seven figures and it drives people crazy. I do not believe that Comicsgate or Eric July would have nearly the problems they're having with comic book industry professionals and crazies on Twitter if their numbers were not public. Because I know for a fact that there are other comic book publishers even like mid-tier comic book publishers that are doing much more than what these guys are doing every month in pre-sales. But their numbers aren't public, so nobody's saying anything to them about it because they don't know. They don't know how much money uh, an IDW or a Dark Horse is actually making every month in pre-sales through Diamond or, you know, if they're doing their... I think they've done some crowdfunding before. I think I think Dark Horse has. I don't know. But uh, let's let's talk about this because... There was this stigma for many years, um, you know, that that uh, a lot of uh, mainstream publishers were supposed to avoid Kickstarter or Indiegogo. You were not allowed to go to Kickstarter or Indiegogo because that was the place where the indie artists went. And if you put your Archie Comics project on Indiegogo, you're literally starving marginalized creators, even though marginalized creators are sometimes in these projects, right? But you're literally starving them to death by going to Kickstarter because you're taking their money. You're taking money, you're taking food off of their tables, right? That was the attitude for a while. And uh, I remember back in 2015 that Twitter got together and guilted Archie Comics out of putting this Kickstarter campaign up. Fast forward a couple of years later and Boom Studios is putting up campaigns on Kickstarter for pre-orders for Berserker and Power Rangers and a bunch of other things. And what happened? What happened? Well, a lot of people came out of the woodwork and decided that uh, this was not fair. When they saw that these campaigns were making millions of dollars, this was not fair. And you had people working on books for Boom that didn't sell more than two or 3,000 copies coming out and demanding higher page rates because they only saw the number. They didn't factor in the production costs. They didn't factor in the taxes. They didn't factor in the shipping. And they never thought for a minute that maybe this is business as usual for a company like Boom. Maybe they're, maybe they're making this much money or several times this per month anyway through Diamond. You're just not seeing it. But whatever the case may be, Comic book Twitter and a lot of independent creators got very salty when they saw the million or $2 million or whatever, whatever Berserker did. They, they're like, oh, it's not fair. It's Keanu Reeves. It's not fair. It's Boom Studios. And uh, I did a book for them three years ago, and they only paid me 50 bucks a page. I want more money. I want restitution. So I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this situation, and I'm looking at the comic book sales chart. Is it possible... Is it possible that 
you know, by switching distributors, you're actually hiding your numbers by design, not to hide your failure, but to actually hide some success stories. I, I'm just, I'm just, again, I'm just spitballing. I'm just putting this out there. I know the comic book industry, the mainstream comic book industry is a shit show right now. I know it's in a really bad state right now. I just watched a video. Uh, it was Wes at Thinking Critical. He did a video on comic book retailers uh, fighting amongst themselves in a Facebook group. And I guess Bleeding Cool called that out because it's so bad right now. And everybody's blaming everybody else. But if I were a publisher, okay, and I were a Marvel and a DC, or I were, were a boom, and I got you know backlash from, from these indie comics creators, and I thought to myself, well, you know, if, if the numbers are blurred, if, if people can't really math out how much money we're actually making, and we're not public like IDW. I mean, IDW is just laying it all out there because they're a public company, and you can see how they're failing in real time. I probably would be like, it's none of your damn business. It's none of your damn business how much money we're making. And just because we're making millions of dollars on this one book doesn't mean the little indie book that you did uh, is, is worth as much. Just because we paid this one guy $400 a page or $600 a page or whatever because we knew this book was going to sell through the freaking roof doesn't mean that your Tumblr-style comic was you know that we could pay you more than fifty dollars a page, and you agreed to fifty dollars a page, and we published it. And we only sold fifteen hundred copies. You know what I'm saying? So I have to I have to wonder if on some level they're not obscuring numbers to keep these people from asking for more money. And you look at Image, and they're switching. And obviously, this is not why they're switching, but they're switching to uh, Lunar. I think it's Lunar. They're going with Lunar now. A lot of other people are going with Lunar, and it's really hard to to tell how many copies I guess you've sold through uh, Lunar, but they just had a huge issue with their office staff unionizing their office staff. It wasn't the artists. It wasn't the people that actually produce the creative content. It was the people that are like shuffling the papers, the office staff. And it wasn't just that they unionized for better working conditions, right? I can get behind that. If you're actually being overworked and underpaid and, you know, you've had conversations with your employer and like it's come to this and this is this is where you're at and you can't find another job or having whatever that's one thing but in the case of the image comics union uh, they wanted the right to be able to veto projects and image is basically a co-op it's like you bring other creators bring their books to image and it works kind of like a co-op it's like a bunch of independent studios publishing under one one banner one roof right and uh, these people wanted the right to be able to veto the guy making copies wanted the right to be able to tell the image founders, no, you can't publish this book because I think this guy made an offensive tweet. You know, they wanted to basically use the union to enforce cancel culture, you know, based on, on what their, their personal preferences were, whatever the deal was. Um, so I thought that was, that was pretty interesting. So if I were image, I would even be like, yeah, you guys, unless you work in sales and marketing, you don't need to know what our numbers are, you know, any other company, you know, the numbers aren't public. I mean, you you know, unless they're publicly traded. And even then, they don't break it down by the, the number of products. When Disney gives a financial report, I mean, you can go in the report and you can see, you can kind of glean some idea of how things are doing. But like, they don't roll the actual Marvel Comics sales numbers into an investor report. Yeah, their Q2 earnings call. Like, here's how many copies of Spider-Man we sold. No, it goes it goes to the bottom line for like consumer products or whatever it is. So I, I'm just thinking, again, this is just my own personal uh, thought process here that there's a reason that Hasbro doesn't show dollar amounts. I mean, obviously, if you're not stupid, you can kind of figure it out. But I think it's not as as threatening to see, oh, 5,000. Okay. Because if you saw 5 million, because when you map this out, it winds up being, you know, in the millions of dollars or whatever, uh, some of these campaigns or Transformers campaign, I think the one was wound up being like five to $10 million uh, for one Transformer, one Transformer. Well, you'd have people coming out of the woodwork. Absolutely. First, they'd be like, well, why does Hasbro need that much money? They just made a billion dollars last year. You know, they don't need that money. Um, not realizing how expensive it is to produce these things, right? 
And two, you'd have a bunch of people that probably like freelance for Hasbro be like, well, I want more money because look how much money they made. I'm like, bitch, please. That's like a drop in the bucket compared to what they usually make. And uh, I think this is smart. I think it's very smart if you're trying to avoid backlash to hide it all, to just hide it all Um, and just be like, we either get enough money to make our thing or we don't and how much money we actually make is between us and our accountant. And it might look big. It might look like, oh, look, we made $5 million. But if our production costs are $4 million, you know, we might not have really made as much money as, as you thought, as you thought we did. But we now we're not going to have people coming out of the woodwork and being like, I want my cut. I want my cut because, you know, two years ago I worked on this book. And I've seen it. I've seen this with crowdfunders. I've seen it with, um, I want to say, I want to say off the top of my head, because she's got me blocked, and I don't even know why. But Spike Trotman, I think she was getting blasted by some of the people she worked with because one of the campaigns did way better than they thought it was going to do. It did like 150000 or 200000 or whatever it was. And so everybody's like, well, uh, that campaign did really good. You're going to have to pay us more. And she's like, that wasn't the deal. And beyond that, she's like, we're just going to break even. That actually is possible. Uh, I'll be honest, we we did the Crimson Wren campaign. We did six figures, which I am very, very grateful for. But we're just going to break even on that book. Between production and printing costs and shipping costs, we're going to break even on that book. You know, which I'm glad because usually in comics, you're upside down. Now, we'll have some extra copies we can sell after the fact. Again, again, I'm going to point you to shopclownfish.com if you missed out. Those books are supposed to be in next week or the week after. Supposed to be. That's the story I'm getting from the printer now. And I have it in writing uh, after after threatening <laughs> after threatening them. But um, I think that's kind of how we're going to do things. And I, 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 have no, I have no reason to brag about numbers. I have no reason to, um, you know, people are like, well, yeah, because you're not doing a million dollars. I'm like, even if I was, again, you know, the support is greatly appreciated. Uh, other than a marketing tool, I don't see the reason to put that out there because you know what kind of insanity it's going to attract. And again, if that's part of your marketing and that might be part of the marketing, I, you know, I don't know Eric July, I have no idea, but he had to have known having watched this scene that seeing, you know, seven figures thrown in your face day after day after day was going to drive people freaking nuts. But the reality is, is if you start mapping out what other comic book publishers are making, they're making that more than that every month, but they can't stand it because they see it and they see one person, even though he's got people working for him, but in their minds, they see one person making this much money. What if Todd McFarlane put his, his numbers up publicly? I know he got blasted too by some people for doing his, uh, his toy campaign, the, uh, spawn reissue campaign. He got like two or $3 million for that. And people lost their shit. Like, why is Todd McFarlane, McFarlane toys need to go to Kickstarter? And I'm like, bitch, that $3 million is a drop in the bucket compared to what Todd McFarlane productions is actually making every year. Like the dude spent that much money on a fucking baseball. Okay. (laughs) I mean, I'm just saying like, but you don't see it. You don't see it. They don't see it. And these people, if they don't see it, they chase another car. They chase whatever's in front of them. So I do believe, I do believe on some level that numbers are being hidden just to keep the crazies for asking for more money or demanding more money or dragging their publishers on Twitter and also to hide failure because there are some massive failures out there. Now, that being said, I guess, I guess uh, uh, Comic-Con went went off without a hitch except for people trying to call security on the, the Comicsgate guys or something. But uh, nobody died. I don't think anybody was threatened. Um, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's just absolute insanity. Like, I, I think things are kind of sort of starting to normalize a little bit. I think we're going to probably go back to, you know, having a comic book scene where like, yeah, you've got different kinds of people making comics. And if you don't like them, stay away from them at an event. Stay away from their table. In fact, I know Comic-Con, they will ask you, is there anybody you don't like? Is there anybody you would not like us to put you next to? And you can tell them, yeah, I don't like Eric July. I don't want to be next to him. I think his very existence 
threatens, you know, queer people or whatever, you, you know, I don't want to be next to him. No, but fine, we'll put you at the other end of the thing. You don't have to just when you go to the bathroom, make sure you don't walk by his table because we don't want the his cooties to get on you or anything. Make sure you don't just accidentally go to his panel because we don't want those cooties uh, <laughs> to get on you. So I think we're, you know, the fact that Comic-Con let these guys in and, uh, you know, without without a massive amount of drama. I think it's basically over. I think this whole thing is over. But um, no, this is just a random thought I had. I think going forward with us, if we do more through our site, I'm not even going to show the numbers on it uh, because it, it just it, it causes problems, right? And my, my goal is to make things. My goal is to make things. Uh, and you need money to make things. But uh, I don't want to deal with, with uh, crazies any more than I have to because God knows. God knows we get enough of them. Just a personal opinion, just a thought I had, and it's a video I've wanted to make for about a week now. I'm going to wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.